Welcome, my viewers and my listeners of the program. Celebrate your moment with joy. I'm your presenter, Pastor Florence Minor, all the way from Minnesota, USA. First and foremost, I want to give God all the glory and all the honor for the privilege of sharing His word. I also want to thank God for the privilege of being called His, his child. I do not take that for granted. And I also want to thank God for you, for the time you take to listen, to watch, uh, to share with other people, and even to, uh, to say a word of encouragement. I want to believe as we continue to share that uh, you will be benefiting from these words. And when you benefit, please, please, please share with other people because sharing is giving and giving is living. As always, I would want to, require, to remind you of my weekly schedule, which is Monday through Wednesday, I bring you inspirational word. And uh, Thursdays, I bring you celebrating in the kitchen with Pastor Florence. Fridays, putting on the right gear for the weekend. Saturday, Sunday, I can take a break or bring you random inspirational messages. And uh, you are there. Maybe you always wonder, how can I be a blessing to the body of Christ? Or what can I do in the kingdom? I want to remind you, there is always something you can do. But you must look around. You must be willing and you must be ready to get out of your comfort zone. And today I'll be sharing with you something that might help you if you've been struggling. And I let you know you are not the first one. The title of my message will, will be Contending for Our Faith. I'm going to base my sharing from the book of Jude, chapter 1. Jude actually have only one chapter and it is the book just before Revelation. And I won't believe God will bless us. And let's start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for your goodness and for your mercies and endure it forever. Thank you for the privilege of sharing your word. Use me as a vessel, dear Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to thee. I pray that I may decrease as you increase. And I dip myself in the blood of Jesus from the hairs of my head to the toes of my feet. That I may make inside that anointing and protection of the blood of Jesus that speaketh better things. I thank you. And for my fear and my reason, I pray that this word will be a blessing to them. And when they are blessing, dear Lord, they shall be a blessing to somebody else by sharing. Lord, you said, you told Abraham that you would bless him to be a blessing. You bless us so that we are a blessing. That's why, dear Lord, we come before you so humble knowing that, Lord, you are ready to use each one of us. Them that have been bound by superiority complex because of what they have, they have... Uh, have been uh, involving themselves in pride. I pray that you may help them to know that you are looking for men who can humble themselves before you. Others are suffering from an inferiority complex, feeling like they do not deserve it. But I want to thank you because there is no man, no woman you brought into this world without a reason. Oh God, I want to pray that each one of us will find our purpose for the glory and honor of thy name in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Contending for our faith. What is the meaning of the word contend? To contend is to struggle, to surmount a difficult or danger situation. Or to assert something as, as a position in an argument. You, like you can say, he contends, he contends that the judge was wrong. You struggle. So, contending for our faith, we must be there to do something. Let me go to the word of God. It says, I'm reading from New King James Passion. Verse 3 says, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our co common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to, co to contend earnestly. That's where I got my title from. To contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men, listen to this, verse 4. For certain men have crept in and noticed. If you have your Bible, please highlight that. I repeat again. For certain men have crept in and noticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation and godly men who turn the grace of God unto realness and deny the only, the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Contending for our faith. Contending for your health. When you are not feeling well there is something that you have to do you have to contend for your health that you cannot when you cannot bear the pain anymore and you go to the doctor 
when you are hungry and you feeling like you are, you are, your legs are shaking, you can't do anything. You have to do something. You have to struggle. Even though you might be busy, you have to struggle to put something in your mouth so that the stomach can feel comfortable. My brother and my sister, we have to contend for our faith. First one, this is what first one says. Jude, a bold servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. Jude was a brother of James. Who did he write all this to? To those who are called, sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. And he says, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. As you listen to me, as you contend for your faith, as you contend for your marriage, as con you contend for your integrity, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied in your life. Woman of God, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Because you can never do this except for the masses of God. There is some creeping for our faith to shake you, to shake us. So you must contend. If, me, if some men are creeping in, it's like, like coming, you know, uh, uh, secretly. Our faith are being crept into so that you believe things that are not according to the word of God, so that you believe you have to go and, oh, and <laughs> sometimes I try to say things and I say, really, are people really using their senses well when you go to places and people, somebody is telling you to remove your clothes so that you can be prayed for? My brother, my sister, you must know that there are uh, uh, men and notice that creeps in towards your faith to shake you. You must know as an employee, there are some men, there could be colleagues who crept and noticed to make sure that you are not promoted. But I want to let you know, you must contend for your promotion by knowing, claiming the word of God that says promotion does not come from the east or from the west, but it comes from the Father in heaven. You must contend for your health when you feel, I am feeling shaky, you must eat. When you feel like you are so tired, you must be careful to eat foods that are rich in iron, my brother, my sister. When you feel like you're feeling like you are gonna be, you are feeling nauseous, you must do something. If you feel like you you are feeling dizzy, you must sit down. How about if I'm feeling dizzy and I continue to do the things that I'm I'm doing because I need to to finish an assignment? Guess what? I can just collapse and die. That is carelessness. My brother, my sister, we must contend for our faith. And you, what is faith? Faith is the evidence of the things not seen, but they are hoped for. Your faith that is not seen, that is the hope of the things not seen, is being fought by the enemy, night, day and night. For our leaders, your leadership are being crept in by unnoticed men and women who are fighting to see your downfall. But I want to thank God that God is the one who establishes leaders. And in this, I'm so grateful for our Lord of Kenya for the peaceful elections. Of course, there will always be things here and there. But I want to thank God for the newly elect President William Ruto. I am so grateful to God. And I think I'll be mentioning this all the day, all, all, all the time, as long as I remember that you being the fifth president, you are you're going to be reigning under the grace of God, the unmerited favor, what you do not deserve. And for your lovely wife, wife, Rachel, who fears the Lord, we are backing you all, even with your deputy, then because of men and women who fears God and I want to remind every reader that they are not there just by themselves they are appointed by God for such a time as they are in power and so there is always be, gonna be contention but you know what our God is the Lord that will always be with us and that's why we need to build ourselves in the most holy faith in the name of Jesus we uh, for the intercessors of the nation, we must continue to intercede. For the intercessors of the marriages, we must continue to intercede because the devil is not happy. If there is any institution, that is what is marriage. You know why? God started the first institution for procreation. There could never be you or me without a marriage. There could never be you or me without a man and a wife and a woman coming together in holy matrimony. And the enemy knows that. And because God is seeking 
for godly seed, the devil is always trying to corrupt that seed that God intended to be holy in Jesus' name. But it doesn't matter. It does not matter as long as we are aware. You may, you may ask me, woman of God, now that you are telling me my marriage is not working anymore. I'm not saying you die in that marriage. Oh, no. You must be wise. And you have to ask yourself, was God in this marriage? Did I enter your, myself into it? Yet we keep on saying, till death do you part. If God joined you, yes, death will do you part. But if God did not join you, oh, you find yourself struggling, struggling, struggling. You are not meant to struggle forever, forever, forever. My brother, my sister, it is a high time. You celebrate every moment with joy. And if things are not working out, you know, there are things that can, may not be working out like it was in the story of Job. But Job knew in the heart that God was in, in control and he stood his integrity. How about the woman? Man, Hannah, who God had crossed her over. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1, that the Lord had crossed the womb of Hannah. I have no idea the situation you are going through, whether it is God who initiated it, you know it. You know if you are walking right with the, you know, in the presence of God. How about your children that are not going well in the, you know, the way you would want them to go? Did you commit them to God? Did you dedicate them? Every time I'm praying for my children, I remember, they were dedicated. They were held by a servant of God. Oh, we were backed with the prayers. My brother and my sister, you can always know. You can always check your it is good to call oneself for a meeting. You know, sometimes I call myself for a meeting, me and myself, a lot, and I ask myself, how did this happen? Did I contribute to anything? If that one happened, you have to contend for your faith, you have to contend for your job. It is like, you know, you could be in that job. You have been going great. You've been given a notice, you know, a warning. And then later on, they let you go. You'll be saying, God, they fired me. They did not fire you. You contributed to it. Hello? Even though you are contending, did you contribute to the failure that was there? I want to repeat this again. Beloved, this is Judy with lighting to you and to me. When I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, our common faith, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend. I am exhorting you. I am inspiring you to contend for your faith, to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Woman of God to stand up like De a Deborah of the hour. Woman of God to stand up like Anna, even though the husband asked her because she was always crying because of being oh, despised by the co-wife Penina. The husband asks her, why do you keep on crying? Am I not more to you than ten sons? But Hannah could not be comforted. There are things that you have to contend you as an individual. And this spiritual journey is about individuality. So I want to encourage you. Seek the Lord in an individual way. And where you find yourself, know that God will be with you. All you have to do, you must contend. You must not just stay there day. I cannot just wake up and think, 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 think or assume things are going to be okay. I have to pray to the Lord to guide me. I have to pray to the Lord to take care of my life, to take care of my share, what I'm sharing, to take care of my spirit, to take care. And I must take a shower so that I don't stink. I must apply deodorant so that I don't stink. You know, you know the other day I had a servant of God, Dr. J.J. Gitahi. And he was talking about the towel, you know, the towel, the, 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 the towel you used to take a shower with. Do you know those towels are clean? When you wipe yourself with them and they are damp, they smell very quickly. If you sweat and you don't remove the dress that you, and you take a shower and then you put on the dress that you had before, you will stink. My brother and my sister, when God takes us away from the sins, we must stay in purity in the presence of God. How do we stay that? We stay by following the word of God because the word of God cleanses us. Hello? But the word of God will not cleanse you automatically. It is not going to be through osmosis. You have to read it. You have to meditate upon it and pray about it. As I encourage you, as I inspire you, 
to contend for your faith, to contend for your health. And that's why like tomorrow I'll be bringing you celebrating in the kitchen with Pastor Florence so that you, or you take care of your health. It's not just going to come. It's like a pineapple. A pineapple is very rich. But before you reach the rich content inside, you have to cut it. And when you cut it, the funny part with the pineapple, it is so rich, but it has so many process. It has a lot of process for it to be ready. You cut it, and those things can prick you. The outside cover can prick you. You cannot eat it. You have to cut it well. And even inside, if you don't remove those things, they'll, they'll feel funny in your mouth. My brother, do you know our faith? We have to continue working on it like a pineapple so that you get that juicy in the pineapple. And pineapples are very good in preventing inflammation. They also have anti-cancer anti ingredients. I am not a doctor, but I'm an inspired researcher. My brother, my sister, you must contend for your health. How about the way you, you dress? You, you know, th this what I'm putting on. I want to thank God that I, th this was a, <laughs> a blessing from a woman of God who realizes that I must connect with the servants of God. She dressed me one time. That's several years back. And she called me and asked me, I had an event, what are you putting on, Pastor Florence? And I said, well, I am not a person of buying outfit all the time for events because then I don't know where because I have so many. She, she had already chosen it to for me. She said, can you come to the shop? And I put it on and I tried it on. Look, I had to try it on. What if my friend who God had inspired to give me this, I do not try it on to see whether it fits me. It fits me well, but I, have to, I had to try it. And for those who always think I have a lot of clothes, let me tell you, most of these things, God just blesses me with them using men and women of God. You know yourself where you are. And I want to say this. We must contend for our health, even for our physical outlook. Don't just keep on saying, I am old, I have children. So what? Children came, but you must keep yourself well. You must work out towards your outfit, your outlook, your face. When you eat the citrus fruit, they are going to make your, your skin smooth. You must not just eat anything. You must not do anything. How about you? You've been married. You say I've been married for 20 years. Me and my husband, me and my daring, we thank God. We have seen God in our marriages. Don't assume you must contend for your marriage. If it's working well, we praise God for that, but don't assume. And when you pray for your marriage and thank God for it, remember others too. We must contend also for our community. I was in a meeting in a Zoom meeting, and I got this, and uh, you know, an identified number. And I told people, oh, please let me answer this phone. My brother and my sister, especially as the servants of God, I know I'm not always, you know, within reach for my phone, at my, from my phone. But when a phone comes and I don't even recognize the caller, I'll pick it up. I have to interrupt them. Let me pick up this one. And I ask somebody, I mean, I tell somebody, I am in a meeting. Is it an emergency? Is it kind of? And I say, can you excuse me? Let me listen to this. And go, let me tell you, there was an emergency. I needed to hear this. We must contend also for our call. We must contend also for our service. Get out of the comfort zone. I had to miss some of the points in the Zoom meeting so that I could go and attend this. There is nothing good that comes easy. I was not just called just for nothing, just to relax and be there. Even though I don't have a pastor that I pastor as a senior pastor, I have my home church. I have my home church. Grace Fellowship, Broken Park. But I want to tell you, in the service of God, there is a Lord. And because I said when he calls me, I have to contend for my calling. Because I know who has called me. You must contend also for your assignment. Man of God, you have an assignment. Woman of God, you have an assignment. As a husband, you have an assignment. You have, a, you have an assignment to protect your family. You have an assignment to mentor your children. You have an assignment to, to provide for your family. You have an assignment to love your wife. You have an assignment to provide for those children. You have an assignment to leave an inheritance for your children. Both in their behaviors, in their characters, in their provision, in their education. 
When was the last time you mentored your children? When was the last time you prayed for your wife? When was the last time you provided for your children and told them, let us sit here and let me teach you the word of God, providing them with the wisdom from above, according to Deuteronomy 6, that we should sit aloud and teach your children. When they ask you what happened, you show them. What can you tell your children where you have come from? That God took you away from somewhere and you are where you are by the grace of God. The grace of God that Jude, brother of James, prayed for the saints of who you are. As I wind up, I want to remind you, we must all contend for our spiritual stability by seeking the Lord in prayer, reading the word of God, being in fellowship of believers, and knowing that you have an assignment under the sun that nobody else will uh, has been assigned to do. But if you don't, that's why even the donkey during the time of Barak and Baram had to talk. Hey, God will never run short, but he always give you a chance. But when you miss that window of opportunity that God gives you the chance, it's never well with you. You live with regret, you have anger, you don't know what is happening, you try to sleep, if the sleep is not coming, you take sleep medication, they are not coming, you must contend for your relationship with the Lord. That's why Apostle Paul told the Ephesians that we must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Contending for our faith. We must contend for our faith. Contend for your health. Don't just eat any hour and when you go to the doctor you say, no, this is in our genes. No. Do what you are supposed to do. And if you do what you are supposed to do and things still happen, that's okay. You have done your part. Doing our best is the key. If you work out, if you contend for your marriage and it still ends in divorce, you had no control over that. If you contend for your health and you go to the doctor and tells you, we have realized that your cholesterol is running very high or your blood pressure and you are not in, you know, uh, in fighting anger. You are not just on, on putting the nutrients for hypertension with anger and bitterness for no reason. If you are living the life that God has called you to do, obeying him. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus Christ than to trust and obey. You trust God and obey him. Trust and obey in your marriage. Trust and obey in your businesses. Trust and obey in your place of work. Trust and obey as you serve. Trust and obey even as you eat. For there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus Christ and to trust and obey. Trust and obeying the word of God. You may not know every word from Genesis to Revelation, but at least you know John 3.16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You know that so Jesus died for you. You accept him as a Lord and Savior. Hey. You know of Psalms that he took for said that he says, I will instruct you and teach you the way you will go and my eyes will always be upon you. Then you'll be able to trust and obey. And there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. That's why you celebrate with every, you know, every moment with joy because you know God is in charge in the name of Jesus. And that's why like Jude, the bold servant of the Lord Jesus Christ and the brother of Jesus said, you know, encouraged, inspired us to know that they are Men who creep, creep in, there are behaviors that creep in and notice. There are, be, there are things that creep in. There are desires of the body that creep in. When those desires come, oh, oh, stand up and start saying, Jesus, take over, take over, take over in Jesus' name. But don't fertilize the desires of your body. Hey. By just staying there. Say, let me tell you, he will, but you must work it out. Work it out, man of God. Work it out, man of God. Work it out, you immigrant. Work it out, you student. You cannot go to school and say, Oh, I have prayed. God, I thank you. You pray in tongues. You pray, oh, you fast 24 7. I want to tell you, you must read. Fasting, speaking in tongues are not going to make you pass the exam. You must read the syllabus and complete it and 
Oh, submit those papers. If you are waiting until the last minute, because most of them, I don't know why they give up to midnight. And then there is interruption of the internet. You have only yourself to bring because of procrastination. Now, they are noticed the spirit come and creep in by bringing procrastination. Well, Turaga Uganegeka Negeka. Hey, stop procrastination. Tating. Even for trusting the Lord, don't keep on saying, I'll get saved, I'll get saved. When? Today is the day, now is the hour. Father, I want to thank you for my fears and my reasoners. What are this word through your Holy Spirit to bear forth the fruit of encouragement to every viewer and every listener so that they can be encouraged in their faith for the glory and honor of thy name where there has been lessness creeping in in their lives. Oh God, help them as, oh God, even myself included so that I can jump start myself to do what you have called me to do. I want to thank you for that man and that woman. I want to thank you for that student, dear Lord, who have tried to do the board exam for many, many times that they are about to give up. I pray that they may stand up and know that you are God of a second chance so that they can jump some themselves and contend for their education. Blessed Savior, I want to thank you. I pray for them that are struggling in their marriages, them that are struggling with their health, oh dear Lord, them that are struggling in their ministry, wondering what God you've called them to do. Oh Lord, open the eyes of their understanding so that they can see that the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. Oh God, I thank you and I adore you. Take over, dear Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Because the spiritual life, the spiritual journey is about being, you know, oh, you there taking it as a person. I want to encourage you. You are there. You have never trusted the Lord. I want to encourage you to trust God, to commit your life to him, and you'll never be the same anymore. I would like to pray with you the prayer of repentance so that the Lord can transform you from a sinner to a saint, from a doubter to a person of confidence in Jesus' name. If you are in that category, do you want to say this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I adore you for your word. Now I come to you. I give my life to you. Write my name in the book of life and give me a desire to grow spiritually. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you've been transformed. The old is gone and the new has come. Start walking in the newness of life. But two things are very important. Testimony of what has happened in your life and also joining a group of believers. Because the Bible says, and that do not regret to meet together is this habit of some, so that you can encourage each other in the days drawing near. You need to be encouraged, you need to encourage other people. And I know God will bless you. I love you, God loves you the most. Let us continue to contend for our faith, for our health, for our relationship with each other, for our community too. Don't just ignore the community, the community needs, because God has put you there at such a time as this with a reason in Jesus' name. I love you, God loves you the most, and... Let us continue to celebrate every moment, not just celebrating, but celebrating it with joy in Jesus' name. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Remember to share with others. Let me know if you have trusted the Lord, and I'll be able to send you some uh, um, information for encouragement, Father, in this new life in Jesus' name. I love you. God loves you the most.